God understood whatever you're going through before you ever started going through it. And listen, he's ready and willing to equip you so that you won't give up right before the best happens in your life. Never forget how much God loves me. Never forget how much God loves me. You have to keep this constantly in focus if you're going to be immune to discouragement because everything in life flows out of the love of God, out of the mercy of God, out of the grace of God, out of the kindness of God. It all flows out of his love. Jesus said in John 16, 33, these things I've spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Jesus said, hey, there's gonna be a fight, but you're gonna win. You know God loves you, but do you feel it? It, it, when you stop feeling the love of God, you can't feel it in your heart. That's when you start to get discouraged. And, and so you've got to know the mercy. You've got to know the grace, but you've got to feel God's mercy. You've got to feel God's grace. Here's the first verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. God in his mercy has given us this ministry and work to do. That is why we do not become discouraged and we never give up. You don't give up, you don't quit. And around us today, there are lots of people who wanna give up. There are lots of people who wanna quit and they can give you some, some rather, um, uh, shall we say, uh, good reasons from their perspective why they should walk away from a situation or why they should quit, but not in God's viewpoint. He has the best for us and he's willing to give us the best, but he doesn't bless quitters. It won't happen. Christ sacrificed his life for our salvation. And when I look at the scriptures and see what Jesus did, he didn't give up, I can't give up. Apostle Paul didn't give up, we can't give up. The enemy can overwhelm us easily if we don't keep God in our minds. Here's what happens when you keep your mind on God and you, you set him before you in your life. And it's a choice that we can all make at any given point in time. The first is instant encouragement. When you set your mind on God, it gives you instant encouragement and a new perspective. You see a big God and a little devil. In everything, God gets bigger and problems get littler. The second thing that happens is it feeds our faith and starves our worries and fear. When your mind is on God, when you're praying, when you're worshiping, when you're reading your Bible, when you're meditating on God and you're just aware of God's presence around you, it feeds your faith and your fears just begin to starve. However, when you don't have your mind on God and you're thinking about the mountains and thinking about the giants and thinking about the problems and you're overwhelmed with your circumstances, it starves your faith and it feeds your fears. We don't look at the troubles which we can see right now. That's what discourages you. Rather, we look forward to what we have not yet seen. He's talking about in heaven. For the troubles that we see will soon be over but the joys to come will last forever. You know, there are three kinds of motivation in life. And you gotta have motivation to keep going. Now there's internal motivation, that's inside you. There is um, external motivation, that's something from the outside that motivates you. And those are okay, but stronger than internal or external motivations is the third kind, eternal eternal motivation, which is this life is not all there is. We're made to last forever. The Bible says that God gives us a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. Let me say this now. It's a garment. You have to put it on. It, you're not born with it and you don't wake up with it. Every day when we wake up, we have to make a decision that I am going to praise God this day. I am not going to let my mind be godless or dark or overwhelmed or depressed, in the midst of my circumstances, I am going to praise my God. And listen, it's what the devil is terrified of. When you begin to praise God in your circumstances, darkness has to flee and God will show up and you will see the miracle that you're praying for. We all know that times in life, you come to a point where you just go, I I'm so burdened down, I'm so overwhelmed. I don't even know what to think, what to believe, what to care about. That's discouragement. David felt this. In Psalm 42, verse five, David says, why am I so discouraged? Why am I sad? 
And then he answers his own question, I will put my hope in God. Anytime you feel discouraged, you need to change your thoughts, you need to change your focus, you need to change your mind. Don't walk away, don't quit, don't give up, don't throw in the towel as people say, but just tell the Lord, Lord, I'm gonna trust you to see me through this. I don't know how, but I'm gonna trust you because you said you will never leave me nor forsake me. And God, I believe you always tell the truth. The brain you have, the health you have, the body, everything you have, your life in itself is a gift of the mercy of God. What is mercy? Well, it's a lot of things, but mercy is God gives me what I need, what not what I deserve. And, and mercy is when God knows every mistake I'll make in my life, and yet he still created my life. That's mercy. And that God knows every sin I'll commit in my life, and yet he still loves me. That's mercy. And Paul says, for me to not get discouraged, what I have to do is I have to focus on the mercy and the grace and the love of God. And he says, that keeps me going. When you get discouraged, I guarantee you, when you get discouraged, at that moment, you've stopped feeling the love of God. Because you can't feel how much God loves you and be discouraged at the same time. God is saying to you, whatever you are facing in life at this moment, no matter how difficult it is, how tough it is, how discouraging it is, and all the reasons and the evidence you have for walking away and all, all, the, all the proof that you have that things are wrong, remember there is a God in heaven. And if you're saved, he's living within you. And that God will take you through whatever you're facing in life, no matter what. There's gonna be a fight, and then we're gonna win. Let me tell you how to think about life. And I promise if you think this way, you'll never be overwhelmed by discouragement. There's gonna be a fight, and then you're gonna win. There's gonna be a fight, and then you're gonna win. God does not bless when you try to pretend to be something you're not. If you want God's blessing on your life, you better just start being who God made you to be. Stop trying to be, live for the pleasure or the pleasing of other people, the approval of other people. God didn't put you on earth for the approval of other people. He put you on earth to be who you are. And when you be who God made you to be, God looks down and goes, that's my boy. That's my girl, that's who I made you be. If you try to be somebody else, we don't need two of anybody else. Because we don't need a carbon copy. Most of us start off as originals in life and end up as carbon copies. When you try to be something you're not, that's discouraging. God understood whatever you're going through before you ever started going through it. And listen, he's ready and willing to equip you so that you won't give up right before the best happens in your life. Romans chapter five, Paul. And not only that, we exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Paul says there's gonna be problems, but God's gonna do good things with those problems and we're gonna win. There's gonna be a fight, we're gonna win. Stay focused on eternity. Stay focused on eternity. Paul's final secret for defeating discouragement it is not, uh, 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 you know, look at the here and now. He says you need to maintain an eternal perspective. You can't live for just here and now. You gotta look beyond the here and now. The here and now is what's discouraging you. But when you look into heaven and you look into the future and you look at the coming rewards and you look at all the things that God has planned for you, then you'll get over your discouragement. Help me to never forget how much you love me. Help me to never forget how much you love me. Help me to never fake it. To not try to be something that I'm not, just to be who you made me to be. And Lord, help me to remember that life is not about me, that it doesn't all revolve around me. It's all about you. Help me to relax in my limitations. To not try to be Superman or Superwoman to realize uh, we hold your treasure in clay jars. And Lord, when I go through pain, help me to not just wallow in that pain, but to use that pain to help others for other people's benefit. 
I don't want to waste the pain I've been through, Lord. I want to use it to help others. Help me to take time for renewal every day to do the things that recharge my spirit, my soul, my body, 